In this tutorial, we're going to look at the brand new Google Calendar that is being rolled out in 2018. This tutorial will help you transition to the new version of Google Calendar, but also if you've never used Google Calendar at all, this tutorial will also be very helpful to get you up and running and using Google Calendar effectively. So what you see here is the new interface for Google Calendar. And this has been made available to many Google users for quite some time. You could opt into it. But starting somewhere around January 15th of 2018, it's going to be rolled out gradually until on February 28th, 2018, all Google Calendar users will have to use this new version of Google Calendar. Now the good news is it's pretty similar to the Google Calendar that many of us are used to and that we have come to really like using. But there are a few changes. One of the first things you need to know about Google Calendar is how to switch the views. And I find myself doing this all the time. Here in the upper right, you can click to change it from a day view to a week view or month or year, etc. For me, I find myself switching mostly between monthly view and weekly view. But it is nice to have these other options as well. Now let's look at how to actually add an event to your calendar. It's really as simple as locating the day that you would like to add an event for and then just clicking on that day. Now in this example, I am on the monthly view and that is significant because it changes what I see here in this pop-up. More about that later. So first it just wants to know a title. I'll put attend basketball game. This is an event. Notice that you can also create it as a reminder, not as an event, but I'll just stick with event. It shows the day that it's happening and it's marked as an all day event. Now, what if it's not all day? This is not an all day basketball game. So I can uncheck that and then some times appear here and I can click to adjust those times. Okay, the game actually begins at 7 and maybe goes till 8.30. Finally, at the bottom of the page here, it shows the calendar on which this will be placed. You can see that it's showing my calendar here, and that's good, right? Well, if I click here, you'll notice that other possible calendars appear. So Google Calendar makes it sound like it's singular, right? That when I go to Google Calendar, I see one calendar. But actually, that doesn't have to be the case. Google Calendar can actually integrate more than one calendar into one view. And I'll show you more about that in just a minute. So I need to decide which calendar to put this event on. And I'll just leave it with the default in this case. There is a button here at the bottom that says more options and I can click there to customize this event. I could put in a location for the event. Now why might that be useful? Well, it'll help me to remember for one thing, maybe I've never been to this place before, having a location in the system would be helpful. But also, what if this is a shared calendar? What if a family member uses this same calendar or a team member or a fellow teacher at school uses this calendar? It would be nice for everyone to be on the same page about the location for the event. If you want, you can include an option for conferencing. This is a great feature. Let's say there's certain people that can't actually come to the event. You could add a Hangout, a Google Hangout, so that they will be able to click to attend virtually. Now someone at the actual event will have to open up their laptop and go to Google Hangouts and use their computer to transmit the event to the people in the Google Hangout. But still, that's a really nice feature to be able to just set that up right from within the details of this event that I'm creating. Next up, notice that I can add a notification or a reminder for myself about this event. If I'm worried that I might forget about it, I can put in a notification 30 minutes before this event. If I'm on my computer signed into my Google account, I'll get a pop-up that says, oh, you're supposed to attend basketball game at 7 p.m. So I'll get that pop-up as a reminder. Now, what if I'm not at a computer? What if I'm on the go? Well, I could click here and I could add, instead of a notification, I could have it send me an email and this is all customizable. I can have it be five minutes before. I can have it be an hour and a half before. Okay, you can change it from minute to hours to days to weeks. So there's lots of options. And sometimes if it's a really important event, I'll admit I put in two or three notifications. I put in two or three emails. That way if I miss my phone buzzing when the email comes in, there's another chance that I might get that text. Now it is possible to go to your Google account and into your settings and to add a phone number for your account. If you do that, you'll be able to add an SMS or text message notification as well, which is really, really nice. 
Down below, it again lists the calendar that I chose for this event, and it has a color. So I could change up that color if I want to. So that is an option that I have. And then I can also mark myself as busy during this time. I'm going to be at the game. I'll be busy. But you can also change that default visibility if you want, make it public or private, and I can change that from busy to free if I'd like. Underneath here, I can put in description details for this event, and uh, this is a really useful thing. You can put in all sorts of details about who's driving whom, who's going to bring the food, who's going to pick up the tickets. All sorts of details can be put there. Now, off to the right-hand side, you'll notice that right there within the same window, you can put in guests. So you can click there. Some of the people that you've interacted with in the past might show up here, and you can click to add them as guests. You can also remove them. You could also put in new email addresses okay, of people that you would like to invite. Notice that guests can invite others. They can see the guest list, and if you want, they can modify the event, or you can remove them from all of those or some of those options. Okay, this is looking good. Now, before I save this event, there is one thing that I should have thought about or at least mentioned to you, and that is here in the upper left, there is an option that says does not repeat, and that's exactly what I want for this particular event. But in many cases, if it is a repeated event, you could go in and say this is repeated daily or this is repeated monthly on the second Thursday. And based upon this selection that you put here, it will add this event repeatedly to your calendar. So I'm actually happy with the way it looks right now, and I'll click Save. So there it is, set up for me to attend a basketball game on February 8th. Now let's look at the same procedure except with the weekly view instead of the monthly view. This is a slightly different experience in my opinion, and let me explain why. Let's say on February 8th, there's my event, but let's say beforehand I'm going to have lunch with someone. I could go in and maybe right at noon I would like to have lunch. Because I know this is not an all-day event, look what I can do. I can just click and drag from the beginning of that event until the end of the event, and then let go. And that pre-chooses for me the start time and the end time of my event. And I can put in the title, make sure it's on the right calendar, click Save. If I want to go through all the options I showed you earlier, I can click on More Options. But in this case, I don't. I just click Save. Now Lunch with Jeff shows up there. Now you might be noticing that these are showing up in two different colors. It's because when I created this Attend Basketball Game event, I for some reason chose green as the color for this specific event. Now let's look at the process for creating an all-day event in the weekly view. If it's an all-day event, trust me, you don't want to click and drag all the way down to select the whole day. So what do you do? All you have to do is click here in this rectangle that has the day number on it. So I can just click there. By default, it's a full-day event. I can put in the title, click Save, and it's in as a full-day event. Full-day events always show up here at the top above this line. So as I mentioned earlier, it is possible to have more than one calendar show up on your Google Calendar page. And let's look now at how to set that up. You'll notice here at the left, I have a few different calendars. I have my main calendar. I have a calendar down here for my Spanish 2 class. But I would like to add a calendar specifically for family events. To do that, all I have to do is go up here and click this plus sign. And it's a little bit confusing because that plus sign is right next to where it says add a friend's calendar. But really, you can just click the plus sign. Choose new calendar and then give it a name. So I'll just call this family events. I could put a description in there if I wanted to. Choose the time zone and then click create calendar. It says it's successfully created. So now I can just go back and you'll see here at the left, I do have a new calendar called family events. It's that simple. It's that easy to create a second, third, fourth, fifth calendar. So now, going forward, if there's a family event, and I don't want it to be listed on my regular calendar, but just on my family events calendar, that's okay. I can just go down, create the calendar event. I'll put in family reunion. But this time, I'll select it's a family event. I click Save, and you'll notice that it automatically is color-coded to the calendar that I added it to. Now, in addition to adding new calendars that you create yourself, you can also browse calendars of interest. So these are calendars that Google maintains or collects from around the world. So if you have a favorite football team, let's say, you could select that team and the calendar will be added to your calendar. It shows up here at the left. 
You could also add certain holidays if you wanted to, phases of the moon, etc. So those are some calendars that are maintained or at least managed by Google, and you can pull them in. Now at any time, if your calendar gets too cluttered or there's just too much information on the screen, at any time you can uncheck a calendar and it will hide events from that calendar. So for example, my family events, if I uncheck that, the family reunion disappears from off the view, but it's still on my family events calendar and it's still viewable in my Google calendar. I just have to click the checkbox to bring it back. So watch out for that. It's convenient to be able to hide calendars sometimes, but don't forget you can also bring them back and you probably should sometimes. Other examples of calendars you can add, if you click that plus sign, notice that you can add a Google Calendar from a URL. So that is one way that people share Google Calendars, is they get the URL for a particular Google Calendar. They just click the plus sign, click here from URL, paste in the URL address of the calendar, and then they add the calendar to their account. That's actually a really smooth way to do it. You can also import a calendar. You would just click here to select a file from your computer. Maybe it's an iCal calendar or a CSV calendar. You could import it that way. Next, let's look at the other tools that we have here in this Google Calendar interface. Here in the upper left, we have a really nice mini calendar that gives me an overview of the whole month. And I could advance that pretty quickly just to see an overview of when the month ends, what day of the week it ends on, etc. So that's nice and useful. We also have a today button, which is actually more useful than you might expect. But at any time, if you get lost in your Google Calendar, just click today. It takes you right back to today and you're good to go. You can also advance week by week or if you are in the month view, month by month, these arrows just advance or go back based on where you want to go. The next thing I should show you is a quick method of adding an event to the Google Calendar. The way that I've shown you so far is a great way to do it. You find the day, you click and drag, or you just click to put in an event and you go from there. But what if you wanted to put in an event for, let's say, December of 2025? All right, that's going to be a ways off in the future. And I don't want to have to click this button 50 times to get to that day. So here in the lower right corner, there's a plus sign. If I click that, this is a quick create button. And so I can just type in Christmas party. We're going to have a Christmas party and it's going to be held on December. And you can see I'm going to be just clicking this for quite some time to get to 2025. So instead, I can just click and type in December 15th, 2025. And it'll be at 4 p.m. Yeah, that's a good time. So I click save and that event is saved. So that is a nice feature to be able to add an event without having to find the right day first. All right, let's go on up to the top here. One of the most useful tools in Google Calendar is this, and that's the search. If you are having some trouble remembering when a certain event happened or when it's going to happen in the future, you can just do a search, hit enter, and it brings up any events that have that keyword in them. So as usual, Google is always pretty good at searches, and this one is no exception. This is a really useful search. Let's move on over here now to the gear symbol. This is the settings menu. And if you click on that, you can go to settings. And there's a number of other things that you should look at. But I'm just going to go into settings. And there are just all sorts of settings here that you can adjust and change based on what you want to do. So that's where you can go to change some of the settings that you might want to change. So that really is all you need to know about Google Calendar to get started using it. There are a few other advanced techniques that you might want to try eventually, and maybe I'll get to that in a future video. But for now, thanks for watching. I hope you found this video to be useful. If you did, please click the like button below, and please consider connecting with me on my social media websites like Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest. And definitely do subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos about technology for teachers and students. And watch for another video from me at least every Monday.